Hello everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an ASUS laptop. This is an ASUS TOF A15 model. The exact model will be A is an FA507RF-HN015W. And that information can be found on the bottom of the laptop on the sticker that comes right on the bottom. It's an FA507R and the manufacturer date is at 2023. Dash zero seven, that's the month number. And in this video, I'm gonna go over how you can open it up and how you can service, clean the fan system, replace the heat sink. If you find your laptop overheating and it's been a few years, couple of years, and you want, just wanna do a simple servicing and cleaning. And that's a healthy thing to do for a laptop. It's like having a car and you just wanna do an oil change. It's the same thing here. And even if you don't, do a heavy gaming, the thermal paste will dry up over time and it will clog up the uh, dust, the fans. So in this video, I'm gonna go over the tools and everything that I do to clean up this one and the proper way. All right, I'll cover the tools and I'll leave the link for the tools in the video description in case you wanna purchase yours. Tool number one and very important one is a good screwdriver. I recommend you the iFixit screwdriver set as they have all the bits that you need and these are hard and steel and we're going to be using a Philips number one. If you get the pro set for this tool set, they will include you with some opening tools and tweezers and a few other stuff. If not, grab yourself a guitar pick. And metallic guitar picks are suitable to opening cases and covers. And you need a plastic spatula, rod, a curved tweezer or straight tweezers, pointy, Alcohol, 99% or 98% isopropolic or isopropolic alcohol. A very important one is a workshop towel. I recommend you use this workshop towel. Do not use any fiber towels or anything that microfiber, anything like that, because the reason is once you want to clean the motherboard and you put alcohol on this towel and you clean over the component tiny capacitors, this towel will rip apart very gently right there and it will not damage the motherboard. So that's why I always say use this towel. And the most important one is a good thermal paste. I'll be using an Arctic MX4. You can go over the board and you can use the best thermal paste out there, which is the Thermal Grizzly Fire Nut, which I'm supposed to have it somewhere over here. There we go. So I'll be using this one here. So Thermal Grizzly or Arctic MX4, MX6, which is the new one. If you want to go over the board, a little expensive, go with the Thermal Grizzly. These are really good. This is Extreme Edition. They are one of the best. All right, with all this on hand, we're going to get it started. First thing first, you want to power off the laptop. Make sure it's completely off. Flip it upside down. And under here, you're going to see a whole bunch of screws. There are two types of screws, the long screw and the short one. The mid-back one, these two are the long screws. So go ahead and remove these two screws and keep them in a separate pile. And next, you want to go all around and remove all the screws except and including the one in the middle, right there, and remove all of them and keep them in an additional separate pile beside the longer screws. Also, if you guys like my videos, if you find my videos helpful and helping you guys out, you can support the channel by clicking the like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the comment area. I appreciate that. Now that we remove the screws, oh, I forgot the one in the middle. Always remember the one in the middle. Because that can be sneaky. Now what you want to do is you want to bring the front of the laptop like this. A little bit. You want to stick the guitar pick about one or two millimeters. I'm not sticking the whole thing between the bottom cover right on this gap right there. And you want to hear those tiny clicks, and that's what you want to hear. You want to work yourself all around in the front. Work on the side. Let me put it this way. And right by the USB, by the fan exhaust. And you want to do the back side. By the back rail right there, and I'll put my finger right in here so I can bring attention right there. So it makes 
your life easier to be able to run. Once you do the side, simply you can just remove the cover boiler around and it should get removed. Now, you can take it outside, use a toothbrush, old new toothbrush to clean up the dust mesh here on the bottom case. You can include it, wash it out with a soap and leave it to dry if you want to, go extreme. And down here, we're gonna see the battery, the RAM, this heat sink, the heatsink, uh, the RAM and the hard drive, and the heatsink right over here, and the two fans. First thing first, we're gonna do right away is to disconnect the battery. To disconnect the battery, simply what you wanna do, you wanna stick the plastic rod right in here and push it upward towards the heatsink about half a millimeter, as much as you can go. Don't force it. Next, you wanna put the plastic spatula right underneath. The jack and flip it like that, just twist it and it will pop open. Once you did that, for, we're gonna disconnect the fans right here. So I don't like yanking on the cable, so I'll put the uh, tweezers on the side of the jack and I'll push it backward, just like that. This fan goes all the way here. So let's connect that one. I'm gonna remove this for now. So you guys can see the screws. So we're gonna start removing the screws on this side of the fan, on the right side. So we remove two screws, keep them on one pile. You cannot remove the fan because actually you can remove the fan. There's a hook right in here, but this hook can get it slided down easily. So you don't need to remove the heat thing. You can just clean it up if you just want to clean your fan once in a while. Use a toothbrush to clean between the fans and blow some air and put it back in, slide the corner right in there. Okay, so if you want to remove the fan, you can do it on the right side. Let's see if you can remove just the fan without removing the heat thing on this side. Remove the two screws. All right, this one. There's one more screw right in here, so let's see. So, so there's a three screws on that side. This side is not coming out. So I can just lift it up a tiny bit, a little bit, but it won't come out. So I'm not gonna force it. You don't wanna bend the tubing. So we were lucky that the hook wasn't tight enough, so it wasn't actually hooking in, so we could have removed it. To remove the heatsink, we're gonna remove four screws for the CPU and four screws for the GPU. And there's a tiny warranty label right in here. We're gonna remove this one. You can remove it gently, and you can put it back on. So remove the four screws. Now once you remove the screws right in there, you wanna grab the heatsink gently, pull it up, be gentle, it's slowly, and it will get separated. There's a thermal putty right on the other components all around. So this thermal putty, you don't need to replace it. I'll leave the link for a good thermal putty. You can buy and clean it and put your own. Don't put thermal pads in here. You need a thermal putty, just remember. And this GPU doesn't have enough uh, VRAMs. If they had, they would have touched this one right over here. You can actually swipe this once, remove it from here, and put it wherever you think that you need more thermal putty. So these are squishy things. I will remove these ones. I'll just spread it all around whenever I feel like I need some. Now I can remove this fan. Simply lift it up, take it outside and clean it up. And here we have the motherboard. I can see the thermal paste, it is kind of dried out. So we're gonna clean that thermal paste. We're gonna grab a little bit of the workshop towel. We're gonna soak the alcohol and we are gonna wipe over the CPU. You don't need to clean all around it, it is not necessary. Just as long as you clean the CPU dye, just like that, you're more than fine. 
But if you want to go crazy and clean it up, gently poke through here. No force required. Don't be careful with the component around it. You can just swipe it like that and it gets removed. You see this one, it rips apart because of the capacitors around the uh, CPU. So we're gonna do the same thing on the GPU. And we're gonna grab a clean towel. And we're gonna do a second pass, dry pass over. Make sure there's no dust particles or anything over. And we're gonna clean up the heat sink. Same thing with the heat sink. Lots of alcohol. Grab the heat sink and right, there's a cap on tape in here. This one goes over here. Over the seat, over the components. But again, these components do not need a cap on tape. You can pull it out. But if you want to keep it, make sure it doesn't overlap over the crystal die has to go all around the crystal die so if it overlaps it's going to create a gap and you're going to have a horrible temperatures there we go just going to wipe this one up there we go. okay so we're going to clean up the old thermal paste we're going to grab our thermal paste here If you have a syringe, you just put a tiny line. If you have a like this, you can just spread it all over this crystal die. You don't necessarily need to spread it around. You can put a one blob in the middle and it will do the job. So you don't have to go crazy about doing perfect job in here. The heat from the, once you power it on, it's going to spread the thermal paste all around the crystal die. So. And this is not conductive, so don't worry about uh, touching another component. Now once we finish with that one in, if you have a, you want to change your thermal party, just clean it up with an alcohol. And get a new thermal body, just put a blobs on top, like a one big drop on top. It's going to squish and it's going to go spread around and it's going to fill up. So don't worry about how much thermal body you put in. Just put enough in there, about one millimeter thick. And once you put the heat sink in, it's just going to squish right over. Put the fan on the left side. Put the fan on the right side. Bring the heat sink down. It's straight. Make sure the screw holes match. Once you put it down here, you don't want to lift it up again. And you want to cross the screw them always. There's a number on it, it's a one, two, three, four. Doesn't matter how you stop, as long as you cross the screw them, that will uh, spread the thermal paste evenly over the CPU and the GPU. So right, once we put these screws, we're going to put the screws for the fan on the right side. And always, once you put the screw for the fan, always right away, just push in the jack, the connector pinches right in there, even the one in here, because people usually forget them. If you forget one, it's gonna start overheating. Put the three screws for the left side fan. And I will grab this heel. I'll put it right over. And pretty much the last thing down here is you just grab the connector for the battery, bring it down evenly over the connectors, make sure you evenly bring it in, and push it towards the motherboard, and push this jack right on top. And that should be covering this video pretty much. And grab the bottom cover, put it straight right over, make sure everything is in place, double check the cables, the connectors, bring it over. Squeeze the corner, make sure it does nice big click sound, the front, the side, and I'll put the two screws at the back, mid. 
<laughs> and the rest of the screws go all over the place. There's a tiny screw that has a little threads right at the end. That I'll put that one in the middle here. No idea why they have that one. There's no C-lock or anything on top of it. So, and then I'll just put the rest of the screws. Now, remember, once you power on the laptop, because we disconnected the battery for a while, uh, it might take up to 20 or 30 or even up to a minute for the motherboard to do a RAM check, component check, so don't panic. It's gonna, lights gonna turn on and the keyboard is gonna blink, turn off, restart probably a couple of times, so leave it be until it just starts giving you an ASUS logo and goes into the windows. Again, I hope you guys liked this video and helped you guys out. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in a video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. And I'm just going to power it on and see what happens. All right, so as soon as I power on, the light turns on here. I don't get a logo yet, so I'll wait for it. I see keyboard lights coming on. So it's still doing some work, so leave it be. So I don't see anything on the screen still. So I see one light here. The RGBs are turning on and off. Uh, so don't panic, don't press on the power on button. Just leave it for a few seconds, up to a minute. So just leave it, you probably see this one going all around. It's gonna go in a circle. It's gonna check every state. I will plug in the charger in case I don't have enough charge in there. So I see that it turned off. And it did turn back on and it's doing again another few checks. Blinks, nice flash blinks on the keyboard, blinking. And there we go. Now we have an ASUS logo and it's loading up to the Windows. And that's it, and this should power up today's video. Again, I hope you guys liked this video and helped you guys out. Until next time.